Welcome back to the Lost Library and the continuing story from Pillars of Eternity. You can see Pella is actually not doing great right now. It looks like he is, yeah, he has a severe wound. And it looks like Durance. No, okay, this is Zealous Focus, okay. Yeah, I don't like that. Bladen has a twisted ankle and Pella has a severe wound. But we also have this adventurer here by the name of Sagani. It looks to be almost like a I don't know. Let's let's talk to this Sagani. Or is this another vision? I don't think so. Hmm. A dwarven woman, dressed in skins and hides, leans against the road marker. Her face is turned down, her eyes darkened by a thick stripe of face paint. She's sharpening a bone arrowhead with a scrimshaw handled knife. Her attention, however, is focused on a bare figurine between her feet. A large, white-furred fox standing at her heels looks up at my approach. Easy, Ituma. It's not him. Oh, and who are you waiting for? Short version? I'm looking for a very, very old friend. I'm not sure what skin he's wearing now, but I'll know him when I see him. And your friend is supposed to meet you here? That's what I heard. Of course, the man who told me so was carrying a staff he claimed was made from dragon bone, but I know Whitewood when I see it. That should have been my first clue, but I had to try something. Uh, back up. What does this stranger have to do with your friend? The long version. Here we go. I'm from an island to the far south called Nasitok. I came here looking for a village elder, a man we knew as Persok. I'm a hunter back home, so tracking someone wouldn't normally be a problem. But Persock's trail is cold, to say the least. And how long have you been looking for Persock? Her painted brows lower, and her compact, muscular frame sags for just an instant. Five years. Well, why can't you find him? There can't be that many of your people in the Deerwood. He died when I was still a young girl. I uh, forgot to mention that part, did I? I'm looking for his latest reincarnation, which could be anyone. Oh, so you've been searching five years for a stranger you barely remember, who could be anyone now. That about sums it up. Actually, I know how you feel. Then you have my sympathies. Hopefully you've got a better lead than I do. And she looks at the Adra figurine in the dirt. How does that statuette figure into it? She dusts the figurine on her trousers and raises it in her small, flat palm. It's carved in the shape of a bear, smooth and round. The polished Adra is worn to a dull mat along its arched back and ovoid haunches. A soft glow emanates from within. Cute, isn't it? It belonged to Persaw. Before he returned to the wheel, he left a splinter of his soul in it. Something to help us find him later. As she holds it out to me, I feel wisps of sensation. Not quite memories, but traces of someone. When I left Nasitok, it was completely dark inside. But as I've gotten closer to Persok, it's glowed steadily brighter. Since I've reached the Deerwood, however, it's gotten hard to read. Some days it flickers and goes dark. Others it shines nice and bright for a few hours. But most of the time it looks just like this. I could take a look at it. I've heard that one before. 
Whole reason I'm standing here is because some so-called watcher from Forktvale told me he could take a look. For a few golden dukes, of course. I was on my way out of the Balmarsh when I heard talk of a traveling mystic who could supposedly see souls. I knew it was a long shot, but what did I have to lose? I went to see this fellow and gave him the Audra figurine. He made a big show of moaning and rolling his eyes, and after I'd given him five golden dukes to lift the shroud, he told me to seek the crossroads in the field between the wolf's lair and the twining trees. Go on. He thought he was being vague, but I know the area well enough to recognize that he meant this place, right between Defiance Bay and Twin Elms. I had a bad taste in my mouth, but my coin was spent and I'd already left an arrow in his knapsack as a friendly warning. Told him I'd come back and leave him with another if it turned out he was giving me the runaround. I've been here a week now. Guess he had the last laugh after all. May I see the figurine? Why? I'm a real watcher. You expect me to believe that? After the story I just told you? And what if I'm telling the truth? After five years, it's worth taking the chance. Fine. But if you try to run, just remember that my arrows are faster. She hands me the figurine, her chapped knuckles grazing my hand. She watches me examine it, wary but curious. I raise the Adra bear, turning it in the light. As my eyes catch a tiny, glinting scratch, the scenery around me melts away. I'm standing on a cliff overlooking the water, seeing through eyes that aren't my own. I catch the musk of beasts amidst the fresh scent of vegetation, and my heart beats a little faster. I'll have to watch my step up here. I look down just long enough to see the sharp, pale cliffs drop into the water hundreds of feet below me. I see a vision of cliffs high over the water. Does that sound familiar? My question is greeted with shrugs and silence. Okay, return the figurine. I've got it. He's standing on a cliff. What are you talking about? What just happened? I told you. I'm a watcher. She blinks at me a few times, calculating. A loth speaks up. I know this sounds strange, but it's the truth. You realize I've got no coin to give you, even if I did believe you. Come with me. I've got other business in the area, and we can look for Persak on the way. Sagani is a level 5 ranger. Can we look? I guess we can't see. Who would we give up? I don't think I really want to give up anybody. Because we have Pelad level 4 Paladin. No, I don't think we're going to give up anybody. I think you're going to be on your own, Sagani. I don't know. Is that a mistake? Definitely not giving up Bladen. But Bladen might be leaving us. Anytime soon. I'd like to see her stats. Let's see. If I click, it's going to recruit. Hmm. 
This is a tough one. I'm happy with Bladen. Durance. Pella now is coming on much stronger. And so is Balashore. I don't know. I'm not comfortable. Not comfortable giving up anybody right now. Travel to the cliffs I saw in the vision, the long hunt. Okay, where did she go? She disappeared? Okay, here we have a little bit of an update. I came across the Huntress Sagani at a crossroads in the wilderness. She journeyed from Nazatak in hopes of finding a reincarnated elder from her village. And impressed by my ability to see and track souls, she accepted my offer to travel together. Okay, so I guess she can come with us at any time. The Long Hunt, is that it? Yeah, here it is. It's a quest. Sagani, a dwarf from the southern island of Naztec, has come to the Deerwood searching for the reincarnation of Persak. And the other villagers gave her Persak's Adra figurine, which contains a piece of his soul. She's been using it to track him, but it's gotten harder to pinpoint his location as she's gotten closer. And then when she learned that I'm a watcher, she asked for my help. When Sagani is traveling with me, my unique sensitivities will allow me to see traces of where Persak, or whoever he is now, has been. Travel to the cliffs I saw in the vision. <laughs> the cliffs I saw in the vision. Travel to the cliffs, right, okay. Well, not right now, because we need to go and find supplies. We need ingredients. That's what we need. I don't think there's anything over here. I think we've covered the area pretty much, but we will just check it out just to make sure. Well, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we are going to be on our way to Defiance Bay. And that is over here. Heading west. Let's go. How do we do that? There we go. interesting so we're going to well first we got to go to the bridge the Adawan bridge I believe it's called is everybody healed no so we should probably rest one more time before we leave because I don't like the idea of going on another journey being half healed so let's rest I think our racial accuracy bonuses are okay Leave it as is. Okay. The Adel Wan Bridge. It'll take us only four hours to complete the journey. Oh, 
this is a little different bridge, isn't it? Oh, wow. I think we're in Defiance Bay just by crossing this bridge. Let's go. Let's have our formation set. I think it's formation two. Mm. No, we'll go formation. We'll go with this formation right here. And I don't think we have to go into... I don't think we need to go into uh, stealth mode. No. There's somebody already. It looks like a guard. He's a commoner. Business around here took a hit when stalwart's mines dried up. Thank you. Let's keep going. Oh, we're going to have lots of commoners here, aren't we? A strand Miramelis and Craddock Bridgeman. Okay, are these visions... Is there anything to these visions? I'm not sure about that. Or are these just... Well, I don't think that's... I think that's one of these visions again, I believe. Yeah. As I near, I feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this woman's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to me. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything to these visions. I see a lavishly decorated room, walls hung with tapestries, ornate oil lamps creating a warm, relaxing atmosphere. There are several overstuffed couches covered with silk pillows and an elegant table in the middle of the floor. This woman is seated at the table, sitting across from another woman. They are both well dressed, their style befitting the room they're in. The other woman's hair is blonde, in stark contrast to this woman's black, and is swept up on her head in a dramatic style. The women speak in an easy, free tone, obviously familiar with one another. Though they each seem to be comfortable in the other's company, a strange nervousness surrounds the blonde woman's actions. She occasionally betrays herself with a little giggle or stammer, hitching over an easy word as she speaks. Her demeanor swings from friendly to shy and back again with no warning. This woman leans back a little in her chair, stretching lightly. As she finishes her stretch, she gently lays her hand next to the other woman's hand, letting their fingers subtly intertwine. The second woman stops speaking mid-sentence, inhales sharply, and turns red. She does not, however, move her hand. This woman smiles and moves her hand further over the other, holding it. She then stands, moving around the table toward the blonde woman, whose face shows conflicting emotions of terror and lust. She giggles and pulls her hand out from under the other and brings it to her mouth, the red of her face deepening. This woman stops, looking down at her, eyes sparkling. She reaches out and pulls something from the blonde's hair letting it fall around her shoulders. Then she leans over, brushing her lips lightly over the blonde woman's cheek, resting her mouth against her ear. As she whispers, her hand moves lithely down the other woman's body to her waist. The blonde shudders and leans into the hand, eyes closing, cheek pressing against the lips still whispering at her ear. This woman's hands deftly removes a small bag from the other woman's belt and secrets it under her own cloak at the small of her back. And she gently kisses the other woman's cheek and stands again, the smile never leaving her mouth. Okay. That was interesting while it lasted. Okay, here's Craddock Bridgman. Again, I don't know if these are, if there's anything to these, but let's reach out for the soul. I see a ship being tossed around in a storm ravaged sea. The swells rise and fall, carrying the ship with them as if it were a toy. This man stands on deck at the helm of the ship while water whips around him. The crew moves about frenetically, trying to keep the chaos under control. He barks orders at them, 
pointing where to go and giving each one a task. The men, while still visibly distressed, seem to calm down when they are given their orders. He instructs the helmsman to resume his duties at the wheel and rushes to the aid of a crewman who is struggling with a rope attached to one of the sails. The ship crests a wave, going almost vertical in one direction and then immediately again in the other direction. Several of the crew are thrown from their fleet, siding across the deck as the ship hits rocks. After the swell passes and the ship returns to a relatively normal orientation, the man quickly scans the deck, counting silently. No one has been lost this time, thankfully. He looks in the direction they're headed, seeing no, per no reprieve from the storm in sight. His jaw squared and his upper lip stiffened. He returns to the helm and takes the wheel again. Okay, let's continue. Is this another vision, or is this a commoner, or who is this? It's a commoner. Excuse me. Okay, nothing there. And this must be another commoner. Oh, Zoran Zizenis. Wow, look at all these souls here. Okay, are we... Uh, what is with these? I see a flurry of matted white hair and an incandescent freeze fire staff before me. See the man. Cold and wild. He chews a wizened apple slowly, discharging spell after spell into the jumble of villagers screeching their way towards him. Cold flame vents from his nose and apple seeds shoot out the side of his mouth as he saunters forward, ignoring arrows and curses alike. A deliberate twist of his staff and a bullet of force glides through the torso of one assailant and another. A roar blisters his throat as he launches himself into their midst, tearing into their essence with his staff. A pleading hand reaches toward him and quickly falls, ignored. Silence takes hold as the tattered man gathers his prize, a basket of fresh pears. He hums as he eats. Okay, well, these are commoners, and it doesn't look like they have much to say. If you need an inn for the night, Goose and Fox has the softest beds and the best ale. Oh, well, thank you for that. Goose and Fox, okay. We need more reasonable people in Defiance Bay. Slow down. Business around here took a hit when Stalwart's mines dried up. Yeah, I already heard that. Thanks. Okay, Goose and Fox is an inn to check out. More commoners. Takes a smooth tongue to solve problems, doesn't it? Have you been to the expedition hall yet? You might find your type of work there. Hmm. Okay. So we are in Defiance Bay. Doesn't look like we can go much further. Can only go one way. And there are two guards here. Greetings. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about Defiance Bay? Sorry, but I don't have time right now. But it sounds like that dozens crackpot. Rowan is stirring up trouble again. He jerks his head at the gate. He'd be all too happy to give you a rundown of the city. Liberally flavored with dozens of propaganda, of course. I'm looking for the Temple of Wodishia. He scratches his beard. Not sure why I'd want to go there. He shrugs. It's in first fires if you really want to see it. You seem to be on edge. What's the problem? Thousands of them, truth be told. We've got refugees coming in from all parts, under some misguided notion that things are actually better here, that the legacy somehow passed us over. So they show up with no prospects and little money and just end up making a worse mess of things. He looks me up and down. 
Uh, no offense. Goodbye. He grunts, and good luck to you. Okay. Is this guy going to say the same thing? The expedition out of Admeth's den are just organized grave robberies. Well, let's go through. So I guess that's it. Yeah, we've cleared out the bridge. Don't think we've missed anything here. I don't think so. All right, we're going into Defiance Bay. So where do we go first? Brackenberry, Copper Lane, First Fires. Oh, I guess we only have the one place to go to, Copper Lane. First. Okay, let's check out Copper Lane. It takes us 15 minutes to complete the journey from Adawan Bridge to Copper Lane. Defiance Bay. The city at the heart of the Deerwoods Revolution now seems on the brink of another. Refugees line the streets, homeless and hungry, displaced by Whiteman's legacy, hoping for relief within the city walls and finding none. Dissidents congregate to protest and to heckle, calling for an end to Anamancy and the ouster of their duke. The city's militiamen cast fearful looks as they patrol the streets, their hands trembling at the hilts of their weapons. The capital of a country that had not long ago incinerated a god now appears to be a spark away from sharing the deity's fate. I'm going to check how we're doing for experience here. Palashore still has a ways to go, as does Pella. Yeah, everybody has a ways to go yet. Okay. Defiance Bay. I miss Adia already. Oh. Okay. There might be some food in here. Can we take that? If we can, we are going to grab it. Yeah. We're going to grab whatever we can because we are here on a food run. Looks like another guard. Is there a fight here? These Animancers have brought divine wrath upon us all. We defeated Defiance Bay back in Duke Hadrit's day. What are people here? Who's this? Talk to all these people. Greetings. Rowan. Rowan's arms are crossed, and his mouth is set in a grim frown as he watches the gathered protesters. He looks ready for a fight. He sizes me up. New in town, hey? You've picked an interesting time to visit Defiance Bay. All these refugees fleeing the frontier and finding the legacies no better here. It's the Animancers. Magrins scorch them, and they nest in this city like rats. You mark my words, though... Us dozens are going to put a stop to it. What are you doing out here? He gestures at the crowd, which buzzes with angry chatter. Trying to get folk to see reason. 
We're in the midst of a crisis, and instead of purging the nefarious forces from our city, the Duke is granting Animancers dangerous liberties. Oh, what do you know about Animancy? It's the study and manipulation of essence, which any sane person will tell you is the purview of the gods. The Adarians at least had the sense to outlaw it, which is the only good thing you can say about them. It's not like magic, chanting, or the soul readings those ciphers do. It's been around since ancient Anguithan times, which is why you'll see Animancers tinkering with old Anguithan artifacts. He shakes his head. Trouble is, the Animancers got no idea what half those artifacts actually do. Not that they'd actually admit it. Our emphatic friend is correct about one thing, at least. Oh, tell me about the dozens. Rowan taps his chest. We're an organization of interested citizens who want to free Defiance Bay from the dangerous influence of Animancers and the tyranny of the aristocrats who support them. We also consider ourselves a militia of sorts, seeing as the Crucible Knights are little more than a flock of preening nobles in training these days. Rowan's eyes gleam. And we're always looking to expand. The more people see things our way, the better for the state of the country. If you have any interest in hearing more, stop by Admeth's Den sometime. The Expedition Hall. A lot of free thinkers in there. Can set straight all the nonsense the nobles and the animancers want you to believe. Might even be some paid work there for motivated types. I'd like to know more about Defiance Bay. Well, this is the capital of the free palatinate of the Deerwood. We started out as the capital of an Adirian colony, but we booted the flaccid scepter from these lands 150 years ago. These days, we're a major port receiving trade and visitors from all over the world. But we, some of us, anyway, strive to hold on to the pioneering spirit that earned us our freedom a century and a half ago. The city is divided into five districts. Copper Lane, First Fires, Andra's Gift, Brackenbury, and Heritage Hill. He ticks each off on a calloused finger. Well, tell me about Copper Lane. Well, this here is Copper Lane. He taps a scuffed boot on the cobblestones. It's primarily a market district, but you've also got the Expedition Hall directly north of here, where you can join treks into the wilds. That's also where my fellow dozens martyrs and I tend to meet up with other concerned citizens. He then points to a long dome building west and north of my position. And that's the Hall of Revealed Mysteries. Eerie place, you ask me, but they've got the biggest library in the Deerwood. Ooh, a library. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, tell me about the first fires. That's where the revolution started, hence the name. These days it's overrun with politicians and panderers, but we'll take it back someday. That's where you'll find the Ducal Palace, the Valian Embassy, and Crucible Keep, he shakes his head. The Crucible Knights were the original freedom fighters in Defiance Bay, but now they're just strutting peacocks with their eyes on fancy titles and their heads up their asses. There's an old temple of the Wadishia there, too. We keep it in real nice for her, he winks. Okay, so that's where the Dishia Temple is, in Firelane. And tell me about Brackenberry. A noise of disgust rattles in Rowan's throat. The nobility that didn't sail back to Adir stayed there. Most of the f families there trace their lineage back to old imperial times. Other than a lot of a has-been nobility, you've got Hadrit House, where Lady Webb and her spies operate, and Brackenberry Sanitarium. The main cesspit of animancy in this city. He spits on the cobblestones. Yeah, tell me about Andra's gift. Got the name because it was a wetland that was drained back in the Imperial days. Now... It's a seedy district populated by sailors, common folk, and more than a few things. Or a few thugs. But it's a fun place, too, if you know where to look. He winks and hobbles at me. Look for a place called the Salty Mast when you're there. 
Other than that, it's mostly warehouses and abandoned homes. Thanks. And finally, what about this Heritage Hill? Rowan shivers. Well, it used to be one of the more prestigious districts in the city. Heroes of the revolution claim plots up there, next to an ancient Ungwithan tower in the city cemetery. Had the best views in Defines Bay. Attracts richer types these days. A lot of animancy patrons, he spits. He glances at the crowd and lowers his voice. You wouldn't have heard, but something happened over there a couple months ago. The authorities sealed it off, and they're keeping their mouths shut. But mark my words, Anamancy's to blame. And tell me about Andra's gift. Oh, you already told me. Okay. Well, never mind. Let's talk about something else. What do you want to know? Ah, uh, you know what? Farewell for now, friend. And farewell to this episode of Pillars of Eternity. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. We'll be back soon.